Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net. In this module, I want to tackle what I believe to be one of the more challenging of all the topics that we're going to discuss in this course. At least it was challenging for me to get my head around. Um, accounts, subscriptions, directories, users, roles, and stuff like that. So if you've ever played around with Azure just as an individual, so you created a, a new account like by clicking one of these free trial links or try for free links here on the Azure homepage, uh, you might not think that this topic deserves several modules worth of, of attention, that there's not that much material here. Well, as you're soon going to see, there's quite a bit more here than meets the eye, at least at first glance. So if I as an individual, if I want to use Microsoft Azure for my own purposes, then again, I can just click through one of these free links and I can get started. Uh, it's simple. And in this single user scenario, I really don't have to know anything about all this other stuff, subscriptions, directories, roles, and so on. I'm, I'm pretty much the ruler of the universe. I own everything. I have all the privileges I need. I can do anything I want. And so if this describes you, you can pretty much skip the next couple of modules. But here's the scenario that I want to follow uh, for the next few modules. I want to work for a pretend startup that I call Atris. I happen to have that domain name, so we're going to go with that. Uh, and I happen to be a software architect at this fictitious company. I'm somebody who's trusted to both make financial decisions for the company to some extent, and then also I can make technical decisions uh, within the organization. So Microsoft recommends that if your intent is to ultimately use the Azure account for either school or a business or a nonprofit or something along those lines, then you should create the new Azure account using this URL. Uh, you can find it uh, today at account.windowsazure.com slash organization. I guess that, that URL could change over time. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is attempt to sign up as a fake company. Now this, there's a, some perils that come along with this. Uh, Microsoft's pretty smart about trying to create fake accounts. So um, I gotta be a little bit uh, shady here. But, uh, and I may not be able to show you everything, but we'll, we'll get started at least. So I'll give it my name. And in this case, I'm going to be the person that's actually, again, uh, responsible for setting up the account. And I'll have some special privileges to start off with. And then ultimately, I'll delegate some of those responsibilities to other uh, people in my organization. But let's go ahead and give it a bob at atris.com. Company name is Atris. And let's see if that is available. It should be. All right, great. And so the next thing is that I'm gonna create a new user ID. And so if you hover your little mouse cursor over, it'll say this is the user ID that allows you to sign into Windows Azure. And you're gonna to come to find that there are different kinds of accounts. We'll talk about those in a moment, but this is called an organizational account. So I'm gonna create Bob at atris.onmicrosoft.com. The country is uh, United States. That's good, I'm gonna create a new password. And this is where things get a little tricky for me. Um, I think they're on to me with my phone numbers and texting me and stuff. I've used several phones already. So I'm actually to the point now where I gotta use a friend's phone. So I'm uh, actually gonna attempt to have this send a text message to me, to another phone, to a friend's phone. And so I'm gonna pause the recording here until I get this sorted out. Actually, as it turned out, it was easier than I thought it was gonna be. So we're ready to keep moving forward here. The next thing I'm going to need to do is give it some uh, financial information to create the account. So let me get my credit card out here and get that rolling. Well, actually, it's going to let me log in first as this new organizational account. So let me do that. All right, and now it's going to ask for some financial information. I'll go ahead. Alright, so I've entered all of my financial information and uh, I'm going to go ahead and agree to the terms and then click sign up. Okay, and after a moment or so, um, we wind up here at what's called the account center. Uh, and this is really the first spot where things kind of get a little confusing. There are actually three different types of accounts that we're talking about whenever we're setting up Azure. Uh, and it's easy to get these terms confused, at least at first. So first of all, you have an Azure account. 
uh, this is kind of the umbrella for everything that you're going to do inside of Azure. So uh, just to kind of provide an analogy here that I'll use throughout uh, a couple of modules. If you think of Azure as a downtown office park, all right, so think about the city that you live closest to. In downtown, there's a bunch of buildings that are all occupied by companies. Uh, well, Atris, my company, is about to lease an entire building. Okay, and so only Atris employees are going to be able to enter that building and to do their work. And so that's analogous to what I'm doing here. I'm leasing a, a building or an account from Microsoft, this Azure account. So I'm going to extend that analogy a little bit further a little bit later. But this is essentially the umbrella that owns everything. And then there's the Microsoft account. And this is what was formerly called a live ID. Uh, some call it an exchange ID or an exchange email address. If you have a Hotmail.com account or an Outlook.com account, uh, that's your Microsoft ID. It's possible that you have a couple of different Microsoft IDs. Uh, it's it's a, a personal account and it's not associated with Azure or any other company. It just identifies one person, me, to Microsoft. Then there's an organizational account. And this is what we created when we set up the account. You can see Bob at atris.onmicrosoft.com. That's an organizational account. And so this is an account that identifies me inside of my organization, my school, my company. And we're only going to create organizational accounts for those that are inside of the Atris company uh, in order to utilize Azure in some way. So the organizational account is created by Microsoft using the domain name that appends your company name, in this case, Atris, with onmicrosoft.com. And so whenever we create new users, it's going to be in the form of, for example, Steve at atris.onmicrosoft.com. Now, obviously, this isn't really what I want. This isn't going to match up nicely with the email addresses that we've already given to our employees at Atris. So later on, I'm going to associate one or more domain names so that we can create a new organizational account that looks something more friendly like this, steve at atris.com. Okay, so as you can see, we have the free trial. It says uh, that we're setting it up right now, setting up this subscription, and we can click here to refresh and to see if it's still in the process of setting up. Give it a few minutes here. But whenever we create a new Microsoft Azure account, there are several things that are going on all at the same time. In fact, it's so seamless that you might not realize that these are actually distinct uh, individual events that are happening. So first of all, there's an organizational account that's created uh, called Bob at atris.onmicrosoft.com. Great. Uh, the next thing that it's going to happen is that it's going to create the Azure account. Remember, it's the umbrella account. Uh, for everything else, and then it's going to associate Bob at atris.onmicrosoft.com with that new Azure account. Uh, and it's going to make Bob at atris.onmicrosoft.com the account administrator. Now, basically, this means that I'm the only one that can set up additional subscriptions, the only one that can touch billing for this particular account. There can only be one account administrator and you can only change the account administrator by actually picking up a phone and calling Microsoft and requesting that change. So the account administrator is the only one who can access the account center. We are looking at the account center right now. Okay, the next thing that happens during sign up, you're, we were asked for some payment information and this creates a default subscription. As you can see here, the dis default subscription is called free trial. It had to be called something and we get $200 worth of credits, so they just named it for us. We'll rename that a little bit later. A subscription is what we'll use to actually add services and pay for those services in Azure. More about that in a moment. Uh, so not only does it create the default subscription, but it also uh, associates my organizational account, Bob at, at atris.onmicrosoft.com, uh, and it gives me a role on that subscription called the service administrator. Now, this means that as the service administrator, I can add Azure services. So I can provision new virtual machines, I can add new storage accounts, I can deploy or, or I can add Azure websites. And there can only be one service administrator for the subscription. However, I can add up to 200 co-administrators who can also manage services for the subscription. 
Now, the service administrator is the only one that can add co-administrators, but co-administrators can add services. They can add VMs and so forth to the subscription. And so these people are probably going to be like developers or system or network admins or database administrators, people that need to actually create services inside of Azure. Now, I can change the service administrator for a subscription, but it has to be changed to a Microsoft account. Remember, Live ID, an Outlook.com address, Hotmail.com, something like that. You cannot change it to an organizational account. And I think this has something to do with the fact that an organizational account can be easily deleted, and that would leave the subscription without a service administrator, and that would be really bad. So we will take a look at how to do that a little bit later in another module, but essentially all you need to do is edit the subscription details as the account administrator in order to change the service administrator for any subscription. Hoof. Okay, let's move on here. Uh, I'm going to move on now away from the account center and on to the management uh, portal. So I'm going to click the little portal link in the upper right hand corner and we're going to continue to talk about what happens whenever we actually set up a new uh, organizational account, an organizational Azure account. Uh, we've already talked about several things, but there's one last thing that happens. And let me just go ahead and click through this welcome wizard. Okay, the little tour, that's nice. Let's shut that down. And now let's go all the way down to the bottom here where it says Active Directory. So the final thing that happens is that uh, a new Azure Active Directory directory will be created. Now from, uh, from now on, I'm just gonna call this a directory. Or uh, if I just call it a directory, this is what I mean. Um, and then furthermore, my organizational account, again, bob at atris.onmicrosoft.com, uh, will be set as the global administrator. You can see that set right there. He's going to be the global administrator on the directory. In other words, this means that Bob at atrus.onmicrosoft.com owns this directory. And I'm going to talk about the significance of the directory in just a little bit. So just like there was a difference between the types of accounts that you'll be working with, the Azure account, Microsoft account, and organizational account, there are roles that can be assigned to a user in two different kinds of roles. There are subscription roles, or in other words, subscription administrators. And then there are directory roles or directory administrators. So a subscription administrator deals with the subscription as a whole. As I said a little bit earlier, they basically deal with adding and removing services in the subscription. I, want a, I need a new virtual machine, I need a new storage account, whatever the case might be. That is the domain of the subscription role. The directory role or the directory administrator deals with a single directory. In this case, we have a directory called Atris. It happens to be uh, the, the, the default directory. It happens to be named after our company. We can change the name of the directory if we want to. Talk about that more later. Don't worry, I'll explain. Uh, but basically, uh, the directory administrators will only deal with a specific directory. So if you're already familiar with what a directory service does or what Active Directory does, then you're gonna understand the basic purpose of the directory. We're gonna spend an entire module on the different roles that can be assigned to a user inside of a directory. Uh, but for now, I wanna revisit some of the core ideas that we've just introduced. Specifically, we'll start with subscriptions. And a subscription is basically a method of payment. So let's go back to view my bill this will put us back into the account center so a subscription is basically a method of payment for a given uh for a given uh set of services all right so every time that you add a new azure service uh whether that's hosting a website adding a virtual machine, whatever the case might be, it's gonna be associated with one subscription. In this case, we only have one subscription, so anything we add will be added to this free trial subscription. But a subscriptions, if you add multiple subscriptions, they're gonna allow you to keep track of the usage and the spending associated with different projects or different departments. So you can use a different payment method for each subscription if you want to, or you can use the same uh, payment method for all of the subscriptions. 
So for example, a different department within an organization, let's say it's the marketing department versus the sales department versus the IT operations department, uh, they could pay using a different company credit card or they could use the same company credit card, but ultimately it will allow them to track how much of their budget they're burning by having all their services separated or segmented by their department. Of course, we could do this by project as well. If we have several large projects in the organization, uh, it, whose budget does this particular service hit? All right, so uh, the beauty of having one account with multiple subscriptions is that they can all be managed by one common set of trusted administrators. So to extend the analogy that I gave a little bit ago, an Azure account is like, built, uh, like a building inside of a downtown office park, right? So, and you can think of a subscription as just one floor in that building that's devoted to a specific department. So the sales department's on the second floor, the marketing department's on the third floor, the IT operations department is on the fourth floor, and so on. So it's where employees work together on projects. One building, multiple floors, each floor representing a department, all right? So just to be clear, there's nothing stopping uh, one company, one organization from having multiple Azure accounts, each Azure account with just one subscription. However, it's generally a better idea to create multiple subscriptions inside of a single account like we'll do uh, because it's going to help reduce the administrative complexity a little bit. All right, so let's recap uh, and we'll come back and add on to this example in future modules. But there's several key ideas that we, uh, that we went through in this, in this module. First of all, an Azure account is a container of subscriptions created by an individual, whether on behalf of himself or on half of, behalf of the organization. And the person who creates the Azure account essentially owns the account uh, and owns the default subscription and owns the default directory. He has the ability at this point to do anything he wants to inside of Azure, but eventually he'll wind up delegating responsibilities to different individuals within the organization. An Azure subscription allows an organization to pay for Azure services. Uh, a single organization can have multiple subscriptions so that it can track the usage uh, or even use different payment methods for a given department or a given project. Okay, so next up we're going to talk about directories and how they're related to subscriptions. We'll see you there. Thanks.